Um, well, thank you so much for joining. Of course, my pleasure. Yeah. I mean, I would ask how you're doing, but I feel like it's a scary, <laughs> it's a scary time right now for everyone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> would you mind telling us a bit about yourself and what you study? Yeah, sure. Hi, um, I'm Caitlin Curtis. I am a sophomore marketing communications major at Emerson College in Boston, Massachusetts. I am originally from a really small town in upstate New York called Cooperstown, which is about a four hour drive from Boston or from New York. Yeah. And so yeah, I'm studying marketing communications. I actually just declared my minor a couple weeks ago. I'm minoring in digital media, which is pretty awesome. And yeah, for the most part, I'm doing pretty well. Yeah. This semester is a very, uncertain yeah. they're living in very uncertain times but we're trying to get through it as best as we can cool cool and how did you decide on emerson like did you ever consider going anywhere else emerson was not my first choice actually okay. i originally wanted to go to northeastern university which is also in boston yeah. and it was my top choice um and i actually applied early decision which so i was like very very set on Northeastern, but I chose Emerson because I was not obviously accepted into Northeastern and Emerson was my top or my second choice. And so I definitely wanted to go to a city because I'm from a really small town. And so I wanted to get out of my town and go to Boston. I mainly like applied in Boston, but I applied like throughout the country and everything, but I chose Emerson just because it's so like the atmosphere of Emerson is just so amazing. And it's very creative. Like all of the students here are very like creative, like um, similar minded people. And that's why I really love the environment. We're like right in the middle of the city too, which a lot of people may, may think that's kind of like a con of the school, but I personally really love it to be like immersed in like in the city, but I, I, I love Emerson. Right, cool. So I don't really know much about the application process. Like, do you have to write essays and stuff? Yeah, we, oh, the application process um, was a little, a little while ago. Yeah. For me, I definitely remember it just because of how, of, of how stressful it was. So like, you have to have your common app essay, you like all of, wherever you apply in the United States, you have to apply like on this common application. That's like the unit or the, the nationwide like application. And so you had to write a, a common app essay, which is like the main essay that you write for all of the schools that you apply to. And the others, like depending on what school you had to write like supplement, supplementary essays. And for Emerson, I had to write two more supplementary essays. And so it varies on like what school it is, but it, it is really, really hard. The deadline for early applications is November 1st. And I think the regular is December 31st. So there's a lot of waiting in the process, which really like, I think was the really hard part of the application, just because you, you have no answers and no idea until like months after you submit your application. Cool. And what's the degree structure? Like, do you have to take math and science? Yeah, so at Emerson, it's really different because we're a liberal arts school and our foundation is based on like communication and the arts. And so we have a lot of like writing and English classes. So as a marketing major, I actually have to take um, some math courses, but math isn't really in the dictionary in a lot of the students that go to Emerson. Yeah. Like, very like journalism, theater, yeah. a lot of like writing programs at Emerson, but specifically for my program being business, I have to take a couple math courses and, but we, we for liberal arts, since it, we're a liberal arts, we do have to take like a few science courses, but it's a lot of like heavy in like liberal arts courses like ethics and interdisciplinary like courses so yeah it's a it's a good variation i would say and that's why like i also really like it because even though i am like a i love math like math is my favorite okay. subject yeah oh, <laughs> and, wow, like, really? yeah english is like yeah. one of my tougher subjects but honestly like being at emerson it's kind of strengthened my english i would say so yeah that's also a good a good perk about the school too. And how did you find moving out of home? Like, 
were you nervous or were you just excited at first i was really excited yeah but when i got to boston and emerson like i mean when i when my parents like dropped me off freshman year i was just i cried my eyes out but i was also just very excited like to be on my own like in the city away but i think the first like maybe was it october like maybe a year ago around around now i started to feel like really homesick and i mean i also kind of am now i think it's kind of just a habit for me i'd say but I, I got really homesick last last year, so I ended up having to um, go home for the weekend, I'm pretty sure. But I think going into it, I felt really good. But I think when you're a freshman, especially, there's times where you can be like very lonely and very by yourself all the time. And so I think that's where I kind of just like didn't really, not, or just didn't really like acclimate to the environment as best as I should have. Yeah, like what's been your experience like making friends? Has it been really difficult or? So for me, it was like kind of easy. I knew a couple people going into the year because I wanted to like find out a roommate. And so I actually, yeah. um, I got the, the opportunity to choose my roommate before I got to college. But yeah, I knew a couple people going in, but most of my friends actually were on my floor of my freshman dorm and so i got to like know like all of the people who were living around me and we were a really tight-knit community which was like very comforting especially like when i felt feeling or i was i was feeling homesick and so like i knew i had them to lean back on this year it's definitely been very difficult with obviously the pandemic it's super hard to make friends mm -hmm. and not all of like not all of my friends are back in Boston this semester and so I only yeah. have like maybe just a, a little amount of friends on campus this semester which it's it's making it even more lonely than it was last year and again it's really hard to make friends like in during the pandemic and like during sophomore yeah. year which is really frustrating but I think it'll get better as like time moves on hopefully but yeah it's really hard to now yeah <laughs> um what about like high school versus college do you ever miss high school or are you just happy to be done <laughs> like that's that's a good question when I was in high school I was that type of person where like I just wanted to get out like yeah. as soon as I graduated I was like bye everyone bye school yeah. bye town but now I catch myself thinking about and like reminiscing on the past and just experience as a high schooler i have a really hard time of looking back on the past and not like being in the present or looking in the future and so i kind of miss it a little bit just because when i go home my my home is still in the town where i graduated high school and so i do still miss like my friends that i made in high school but it's yeah, sure. also like I'm here in Boston to like make my future and I've met so many amazing people and I've been able to experience so many things that I didn't or were, or were not able to in Boston or my hometown. So I think that's like the best thing about being away from home and graduating high school. But there are times where, especially now where I'm like very lonely, I'm just like looking back on the past and even freshman year, sometimes like I'll like reminisce on high school. Yeah, so what's your class schedule like? Like, is it all online or you still have in person? I'm doing a hybrid mode, which okay. basically, I don't know what you all are doing, yeah. but a lot of the schools in the United States, or, or at least Emerson in particularly, we're doing a hybrid mode, which we have um, in half in-person classes and half Zoom classes. And so today, um, our president actually, because of the election, um, put all of our classes online because we're in the middle of the city. And so yeah. it's actually really scary in the city which <laughs> on election day, which I didn't really know. But um, yeah. yeah, but usually I have um, a 10 a.m. I usually have online and uh, 12 p.m. in person today. But and tomorrow I have both in person. So, yeah, it's, it's half and half. And I do like the hybrid mode and being in person. But 
online classes, I just like cannot focus at all. That That's really where I'm struggling. Right, right. Yeah. How do you find the workload? Like, do you think you can have a job while you're studying? Uh, I think it depends on the classes that yeah. I'm taking. I'm taking all marketing classes this semester. And honestly, I think if I were to pick up a job, I think I would be able to handle the workload. Um, in terms of like being able to do YouTube, especially like being like doing YouTube plus being a student is really, really difficult, especially like man managing time and everything. But I do think I would be able to pick up a job and work. I, it's just really hard now with the pandemic. I originally wanted to work this semester, but um, circumstances yeah. but yeah I think it definitely depends on the classes I'm taking because the classes depend on the type of workload that I'll have my liberal arts courses tend to be really heavy on the work and so or at least for my marketing classes I'm really easy it's like easier for for me to do that yeah. work rather than the liberal arts courses so yeah I think it ultimately depends yeah and I guess going into your YouTube because you started quite a while ago. So what made you want to start like doing YouTube in the first place? Yeah, you mentioned I, I yeah. started when I was in eighth grade. I think um, my biggest thing for starting YouTube was just seeing how many successful YouTubers that I looked up to were making money and like making an impact on the world. And so I think as the eighth grader I was, I wanted to become that and kind of just like start something for me. And then it became into this just, um, overwhelming hobby. And it's one of like my most favorite things to do on like a day to day basis. And I love the analytic and the business side of it. Obviously, I love the creative aspect of it. And it also incorporates some of the things that I'm learning today. But when I originally started, it was definitely like the other successful YouTubers that I watched on a daily basis. Cool, cool. Yeah, so who, who are some of your favorite um, people on YouTube? Like, who do you like? Um, <laughs> so when I was in, like, middle school and high school, definitely, like, the beauty influencers, yeah. like Alicia Marie. I think I just watched one of her videos actually but like all of those like beauty guru videos that were really popular yeah. in like like the early 2010s right now I'm I've been watching a lot of like college youtubers mainly ones that are particularly in Boston just because like I want to see the differing lifestyles right. like Boston so I don't watch as much YouTube as I did like when I had the time to in high school. Right. I guess, do you have any advice for maybe like smaller YouTubers or people that are just starting out? Like how can they kind of grow their channel? So I think like what I learned, I think because my channel like kind of grew a little more over quarantine, like over the summer months. Yeah. I think my biggest thing is just persistence. My freshman year of college, I didn't really post or upload as much mm -hmm. as I do now. I think just the persistence of being able to upload constantly and giving and devoting a video a week or like how or how many videos that you possibly can upload to your audience I think is like one of the best tips I have for like smaller youtubers because like I've obviously been on YouTube for a really long time I haven't really grown as much as I, I wanted to but again like I've also just like I've put in the time and I have put in the effort and I'm starting to see numbers and success which is is every youtuber's dream and hope and so i think definitely persistence is would be like my number one tip for small yeah YouTube. yeah definitely i think being consistent <laughs> yeah it's like it's not necessarily you don't need a schedule but just like putting out quality content basically yes definitely yeah. have you like done any collabs or do you ever try to like reach out to companies or are you not really into that <laughs> <laughs> I yeah actually in like July I reached out to because I again like I was putting a lot of time and effort into my YouTube like the past couple of months and so I think also like another tip for small YouTubers is that like if you want collabs and if you want to partner with brands then you need to take the initiative yeah. and so I emailed like a ton of brands that I had ideas for videos for and 
I, I reached out to them and I was like, hey, I have this video idea and they, I haven't had any sponsorships, but I've had companies and brands like help me you utilize their products to promote their brands and definitely collaborations are mutually beneficial for both brands and so if you give a company the the 100 percent effort that you have they will give give it back in return in terms of like collaborations with other youtubers i'm actually in the midst of doing a series on my channel right now um the third episode of this series called the boston tea party oh yeah yeah i've seen that (laughs) yeah Yeah, Uh, like students from boston right yes yeah so i actually just um emailed they i've got some responses today actually but i emailed some of my favorite youtubers from boston and I'm going to be able to interview them for that series in a couple of weeks. So I'm really excited about that. Yeah, definitely. I feel like cold emailing is really underrated because yeah. most people are like more than happy to get involved in like anything. They just, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. You just have to reach out. Yeah. Like you just have to put your foot in the door and then you'll, right. you'll get it. Yeah. I know you're quite into concerts as well. Like you've done a few music vlogs. So yeah, do you have like a favorite concert or is it just too hard Ooh. to choose? I mean, yeah, I'm very yeah. indecisive, but um, I've been getting into, well, like the past couple of years, I've been getting into a lot of like smaller, like indie bands. Yeah. And my favorite concert, I think I actually didn't do a vlog on it, but I would say, um, I don't know if you know the band, but Hippocampus, they're a really like small indie pop or indie rock band and they played like an hour like outside of my hometown and it was the most like intimate concert like I've ever been to there was maybe like 200 people in the audience and so it was just amazing to be able to witness like a band being in their like complete self while being able to experience like a personal concert which is really awesome cool cool um and do you have any favorite spots in boston or like if someone's going there maybe maybe like not now but you know yeah later <laughs> on if someone people want to visit like what can they do yeah so um this year i actually just discovered it i knew what it was but i never actually took the time and went to it um but it's this like kind of landmark but it's called the Charles River Esplanade. Early on in the semester, I was waking up at 7 a.m. to take a walk down to the Charles River Esplanade every single day. It's getting really cold and it snowed the other day, so I kind of stopped that. But if, if I were to say to go somewhere in Boston, it's beautiful, like on a good day, on a bad day, it's really, really nice. It's this like kind of yeah, it's basically an esplanade where like you can see the entire river and you can see the opening to the Atlantic Ocean, which is amazing. And it's just really serene, I'd, I'd say. Cool, cool, nice. Um, I guess just finally, do you have any advice for maybe like incoming students to Emerson? As of right now, I would say for Emerson students, like incoming is to like, just be willing and be open to try everything. Because especially this uncertain, semester like don't don't be afraid to like immerse yourself and get yourself out there and go to school like this these times can be really really hard to just give up and say like no i'll just wait and push it off but i think again with persistence and like perseverance like you just you have to be willing to try everything and just knocking down barriers so i think that's that's what i would say Right, cool. Yeah, that's a good advice. I feel like that's any college students or just students in general. Eh? Like, just, yeah, uh, definitely. Try stuff. Yeah, yeah. Get involved. Cool. Yeah, that's pretty much it for me. Um, thanks so much for your time. Yeah, of course. I'll thank leave you your links down below. Oh, yeah, thank everyone you. can go follow you and subscribe. <laughs> oh my god, that's so amazing. Thank you so much for reaching nice. out. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I'm trying to get like a good variety of students from like all around the world. Yeah, and, I've, I've watched some videos. Thank you. <laughs> cool. Yeah. yeah, hopefully we can like keep in touch. Maybe one day like meet up. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, You're ever in Boston. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know. Yeah, cool, cool. Yeah, thanks so much. And um, yeah, enjoy the rest of your day or night. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, enjoy the rest of your day as well. Cool, thanks. Awesome. See ya. Bye. Bye.